I'm Nicole. And I'm Paul. And with our motley crew of numerous children from our blended family, we sail around the Mediterranean on Savvy of London, our XP55 at Sailing Yacht. Please tick that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and thank you for joining us on this journey. We spotted this off the starboard bow some time ago and we decided to rescue it. Leave the authorities. Someone needs to... There is a distress signal. Are you ready, Steve? I am ready, but I don't know how to do this. I think that um, technical equipment might be needed. Look, shallow water. We're taking Where's risks the here. Line? Where's the red line? Somebody in Ibiza will be so pleased that we've recovered this. I'm sure there's an all ships bulletin that's gone out. You're gonna lasso it. I'm sorry, we can't save it. Does it have a heartbeat? Sorry? Does it have a heartbeat? I've I think we might need to do shockers. I think it's alive. No. That's a much, much better one. Much better. Thank you very much. It's okay, it's okay. Calm down. Thank you, thank you. And we are desperately trying to sail in about four knots of wind using the asymmetric spinnaker which looks a bit like this in the dark so a bit of a problem today not a lot of wind we've been becalmed completely and we're running low on fuel so we're trying to sort things out um, so I thought, well, why not make the best use of your time? Oh, my leg. Okay, Savvy was launched in 2014 in the Baltic. I've moved her around often with Steve on board. We found the longer the passage you're on, the more crazy you go. After a couple of days, you'll find yourself turning the most ordinary things into something to highlight your day. Cleaned all the bloody bone for you. Can I land out at this? And when the wind dies, what do you do? You jump in the water and you clean the boat. Sailors do not like dirty bottoms. Here we are in the middle of the Mediterranean, and it's raining. <laughs> We bumped into a pod of sperm whale. We thought it was a log floating in the middle of the Mediterranean, as far away from land as you can get. And uh, then all of a sudden water started spurting out the top of one of these logs. And we realized that oh, it must be something else. And we had this amazing interaction with a pod of four huge male. We managed to get the cameras in the water, just us and them for an hour just something else. You don't expect, you genuinely don't expect to see a pod of sperm whale in the Mediterranean in the middle of summer. Apparently they're there, we saw them. It was something else. And that kind of epitomizes sailing. Things that you would never have expected to see, you see when you're sailing. This is something you never tire of. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of dolphins in lots of different places, yet whenever they show up, I find myself running up to the front of the boat with a camera or a GoPro in my hand, desperately trying to film them. I am like an excited schoolboy. In the summer of 2018, I was facing my first week alone while my children were on holiday with their father. Understanding how difficult it was, Paul invited me out to Ibiza where he was sailing around the island with friends and family. So I've just arrived at the Cotton Club, which is a restaurant here in Ibiza. And I'm here at Calatagra. And here is the boat that's going to be my home for the next 
The reason we're sitting out here in the garden is because we're in the middle of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which means... Which means we don't get to go sailing. Um, and uh, if I look a little bit disappointed and grumpy, it's one of the reasons. It's because you're very disappointed and grumpy mm -hmm. about not going sailing. Yep, but the world's a tough place, so we're very fortunate to have this. We don't get, though, to uh, record new bits. No. So for that reason, we thought that for our new channel, we would bring you some of the highlights and the stories so far over the last couple of seasons. First in 2018, picking up the story there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when the story began. Mm. A little island, if you've been, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a lovely place, it's very popular, but a lovely place. And if you haven't been, you should definitely go and see it. Uh, the water there is beautiful. Um, and yes, we are working together, but um, we've both been through an interesting time of change in our lives. We were good friends and you'd had a tough few weeks. And I said, look, come out and just spend a few days on the boat. It will change you a bit. Uh, so you came out rather reluctantly. In fact, you said no about eight times. I said, look, come out any time. And you said, right, I'm coming. I'll be there tomorrow. Or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, um, came out the next day. And you arrived to a, a windy bit of chop, and I'm thinking, oh no. And the boat was rocking about, and getting out of the tender was a bit tricky. And for those of you. <laughs> I came over, remember, <laughs> I came over with a tubby rolly bag and yeah. a Louis Vuitton hold all, <laughs> wearing a dress with nice shoes. <laughs> so I, I got the tender to the beach, and I said, this could get a bit messy. I was fairly candid about um, the fact that we were going to get bashed about a little bit. There was a bit of surf just getting on the beach. Uh, but she's an Aussie girl, you know, she should be used to a bit of surf. And she was uh, unfazed with a Louis Vuitton uh, hold all <laughs> and her Toomey rolly bag um, to go sailing. I mean, who does that? Um, I just jumped in uh, with a beautiful dress on, as I recall. Um, there was a lot of seaweed on the beach getting thrown everywhere. Basically, we were covered in seaweed, soaking wet, getting the boat through the surf. We got out to Savvy that was rolling around and I'm thinking, right, in half an hour's time, this could be <laughs> curtains, this could be over, because we're just, we're doing this. We were rolling. The other problem is, you know, may not, may not be obvious, but Nicole only has sight in one eye, which uh, for perspective, depth of field and knowing where you are, makes life a little bit more difficult. So uh, I'm bringing her to this boat and thinking, this, this just isn't going to work. Uh, but she got on the boat and I think within half an hour, she was making something to eat, realized that, oh, this feels a bit strange, but just dealt with it like and a fish I, to water. like a fish to water and at this point we're friends and i'm thinking well you know i might have another i might have a female crew i've never had a female crew member before i haven't done passages of female maybe maybe this girl might actually like sailing Only was Paul great company. He was also the perfect Instagram boyfriend, capturing footage of me on the mast and rocks, and then attending to my cut leg when I slipped on the coral. Anything for the gram. Paul invited me out to Savia's friends, but it was that night at S. Molly de Salle on Formentera that we both realized this could be something more. After a few incredible days with Paul, some family and friends, I went home to spend the summer holidays with my family and let Paul get on with a boys' trip. It wasn't long before Nicole was back gate crashing another boys trip. Kyle was really happy to have Nicole with us. It meant less of my time on my phone messaging and calling. Young love, huh? Nice dances, go on, almost! 
You ready? Shady money man, turn around. Oh, there's waves coming, Paul. Waves coming. This is gonna be great. There's a wave right at the right moment. Come on. Yeah. Nah, uh, you get your balance. This is gonna go really wrong. If this works. Yeah. Diving with the water. Yeah, okay. Anyway. Yep. Are you ready? Yeah. We're gonna mark you afterwards, okay? okay. Come stop dithering, get on with it. Are you recording? Why don't you dive off? Yes, I have been the whole time. That's it. Okay, ready? Go! Ah, that's a long way down! <laughs> I really got to know Paul in a different way this trip. We shared so many interests, including good Ibiza dance music. I really loved this DJ opening at Ashwaya that night. He didn't have that too cool vibe, he just looked like he'd been allowed to play for the very first time. This sailing experience made me see Paul not as a business partner, but maybe a life partner. When we left Ibiza that evening, it was a hasty departure because the weather was changing. And just as I was getting ready for us to leave, I realized I'd never sailed a passage with just me and a girl. And not just any girl, a girl who has never sailed on a passage before. Her first time on a boat was just a few weeks earlier. How was it going to go? We sailed from Ibiza to Cartagena. That's where Savvy was to be wintered. It was a magical passage. I will never forget it. We had no phone reception. It was the occasional ship, one or two dolphins, and just Nicole and I. We arrived just before sunset in the beautiful city of Cartagena. And that was the end of Savvy's summer of sailing. It wasn't for me. I presented a TV show aboard a racing yacht at the Southampton Boat Show and Boat Race. We spent more than a couple of weekends using Cartagena as a weekend retreat for us as a new couple. This is a great place to spend a few winter months. Door to gangplank in a couple of hours, Cartagena is one of the best kept secrets of Spain. A couple of millennia of history, the weather's fantastic, the people are lovely, and it's got the most reasonably priced tapas you've ever come across. In the shallow, we're far from the shallow now. And while we were there, we hatched a plan. Somehow, brand new couple sailing on a boat, which can be quite stressful, just worked. Well, after that success, we decided we made plans to take our blended children, or at least the youngest of them, sailing with us next season. In the next episode, watch us start our first adventure as a blended family on board Savoy, sailing up the coast of Spain and over to the Balearics.